Aloha and welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure coming to you from Waikiki Beach. Uh, high above St. Augustine's Catholic Church, actually. My, my office is right next to the church. And we have a guest today who is uh, pretty much a real character, someone who's a great friend of the show and a great friend of mine. He does a lot of our voice here on the radio show and also on our TV show, Long Ride Home with Bear Wozniak. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Kickstart that engine and roll thunder with the pack. Explore the grittiness of manly spirituality. Gain traction in the virtues. Zoop up your spiritual engine by turning adversity into adventure. Now here's Bear Wozniak. Let's ride. Aloha. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak. Today we have a special guest, a special friend of ours. He's the voice of... Uh, Long Ride Home TV show. He also does a lot of voice work here on the Bear Wozniak Adventure, and he's a good friend. And so I want to welcome to the show today, Pat Gervais. Pat, where are you right now? Well, actually, I am also in Waikiki here in uh, the beautiful state of Hawaii. Uh, what can like, I say? This pl this place is paradise. It is paradise. I've been reading Dante's uh, Paradise. You know, this, I've been reading the Divine Comedy and halfway through Paradise, and he hasn't mentioned Hawaii yet, but I'm sure he'll get to that pretty soon. But how really, really, how, where are you? How far are you away from me right now? I, I'm probably about 30 feet away from you. I'm in the uh, spare room and you're your condo. You're, yeah, other side of the house. And, you know, it's so cool. Um, very, I've only done a few times where the actual guest is right near where I am. But, yeah, Pat's been here for a few weeks suffering for Jesus in paradise. You know, Pat, we invite people to come out here for the Deep, Deep Adventure Quest retreats. Uh, it's like a man camp, but the men also bring their families. And we have a couple special things for the families. And that's always between December 8th and December 11th. Uh, and so if you missed this one, come next year. You can go to our website, deepadventure.com, and click on the store. And right in there, there's a place for you to sign up. So uh, t tell them a little bit about what your experience has been so far here in the last few weeks here. Because you came from uh, the state for an extended time. Yeah, I did come to stay for an extended time. It's one of the advantages of being retired from my professional life. I do get to have the opportunity to be able to travel a little bit more, but it has been phenomenal. Uh, recovery from the flight is probably the hardest part, but the water is phenomenal, of course. It's the ocean, the, uh, the fish, the aquatic life in there, it, even you know Honolulu Harbor. You think of a harbor, you've got ships, you, you know, there's everything draining out of them. And you look down on the surface of the harbor, it's looking into an aquarium. Not that it's it, it's like looking at an aquarium, it's not really, it's just nature. And then, uh, you, know, the, you know, the remnants of the volcanic uh, range here, and you know, I, I can turn my head a little bit, and I see Honolulu, but I also see this lush green jungle out there, it's just, mm. What about, the, what about the Hawaiian people and the Hawaiian culture? What do you, what have uh, you experienced uh, in that? I've heard about the aloha, and uh, you know, which means to give breath, but everyone is so, everyone that I have met that has you know, greeted me, when they say aloha, it's said with a heartfelt smile. It, it, it truly is radiating love. You know, I got to say, like it is this morning, we had coffee down by the coffee shop next to my condo, Kai Coffee. And this is what happens. Um, I know it happened to you, too. Uh, Hawaii kind of grows on you. And at the table next to us sitting outside, there was a woman with two kids and a husband. And, and uh, it was frenetic energy over there. It was uh, um, uh, iTunes uh, thing for the shows going. The woman is very, very tense and, and talking rapidly and shouting out the latest news on COVID. And you can tell they probably just got here because Hawaii hasn't had her effect on them yet. But what happens is you find out some people walk at mainland speed, or we call it painland, but then gradually they begin to slow down and start walking at Hawaiian speed because they can't, because people are going to be walking slow in Hawaii. And so they finally have to just say, are we going to pass everybody or are we just going to uh, enjoy that Hawaiian style? And I know you got a brand new pair. We call it slippers. you got some flip-flops. Those automatically slow you down a little bit. But how, how has Hawaii grown on you? Uh, it's just tremendous. I, the the amount of exercise I've gotten between uh, going out and golfing on some great golf courses, and it, even the worst golf course out here is phenomenal. The view is just mind blowing, 
and the exercise, the walking that I've been doing right here in Waikiki, everything's walking distance. I think a personal record for any given day for me has been about 11,000 steps before coming out here. I've had a, I had a 16,000 step day since I got out here and didn't feel like I spent all day walking. It just, it yeah, happened. You're, you're getting in better and better shape. What's the, what's the worst? I will just say this for you. The worst thing about Hawaii is uh, it's so annoying. All these rainbows. I know. Uh, since I, I think I see on average one rainbow a year, I've seen three, uh, four, maybe five rainbows. That's all. They, they occur, they occur three, out here. So you mean every day? Almost. Yeah, yeah. You <laughs> see a rainbow so at least often that people just kind of don't even notice them. They don't react. Yeah, sometimes it's just so stunning. Uh, but we see rainbows every morning uh, during the sunrise, and sometimes in the middle of the day, and then the evening sunsets are so spectacular. So my wife and I, whenever we see a ra rainbow, we just go, "Oh, not again! This is getting so old." But it doesn't, and the beautiful trade winds blowing through the through the palm trees. So people, if you want to come out on an adventure, go to deepadventure.com and join us on the 2022 Deep Adventure Quest, December 8th through the 11th. But Pat, uh, how, how did you and I meet? It, in a single word, motorcycles. Mm. Uh, I was riding, had ridden with uh, the Patriot Guard Riders, which is a great organization. Uh, you know, if you want more information, go online, look for the Patriot Guard Riders. They've been around almost 20 years. But I was looking for something. But no, but you, but you, when you ride, ride with the these are these are mostly you ride really during funerals for the for our for our um, our military. Yeah, and for, you ride uh, with the family to anyone give them, that's killed in action or uh, even veterans that have passed. Uh, yeah, from so old you're, age. You're, but, you give support to the to the families. It's just so beautiful. You're right, right there with them, honoring. Yeah, yeah. We're there at the funerals. We'll hold flags and. Uh, I've come up on some of our displays, and it's mind-blowing to see how many flags there are. But I was looking for something more Christian, more Catholic. And so I started looking for a Catholic motorcycle group. Uh, encountered uh, Eric Wardrum and the Catholic mm, Crossbearers out of uh, Cleveland. Yeah, beautiful. And uh, was, you know, had a few conversations with him, and he shared his interview with uh, you, mm. uh, you know, for your radio show once. And... I went, what this bear guy he sounds kind of interesting so i started tuning in and uh you were doing the morning catechism so started watching that and ended up down in florida we you know caught up we went riding a few times and the rest as they say is history yeah I, and by the way that interview with eric wardroom you can find it on our youtube channel it's one of the most powerful interviews i've ever done he's the founder of catholic cross bears motorcycle he was in the he was in prison and uh, had a conversion experience there by going to confession with the priest, and just a great healing and just beautiful. What is it about the What is it about bikers? There's a certain There's a brotherhood even among uh, you know people are different motorcycle clubs or and uh, uh, may, may not even know know each other. But what 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 do you see? Some of the virtue you see in the in the bright biker community. Uh, well, uh, obviously fortitude. Fortitude is the biggest. Uh, in the motorcycle world or motorcycling in general, that's the, uh, you know, the, the biggest virtue that everyone shares, but there's also loyalty, which is uh, justice, I would think it would fall into. Yeah, you know, we, we tend to be loyal to our own groups, but we're loyal to each other just by the fact that we ride. Well, it's, yeah. it's, you know, it's a camaraderie, it's a brotherhood but it's also a, a, res, a huge respect. I remember back in the day, surfers, when we were on the way down to the beach, we would give each other the chaka from the people coming up would give the chaka to the people going down to the beach in their cars, or they give them the thumbs up or the thumbs down or the kind of the wave that let them know the surf's up, surf's down, or it's, it's kind of mellow. But now there's, you know, radio, there's uh, all kinds of computerized, you can find out what the surf is like, but there used to be a real brotherhood among surfers where we'd wave at each other when we passed but it's that's still the same with bikers bikers when you pass a biker on the road everybody gives each other a, the brotherhood wave you know yep uh, and each group has a different you know like you said for uh surfers it's the chakra the shaka and uh with bikers it's uh you know we usually we reach out with our left hand with two fingers kind of pointed down at the road 
Yeah, I mean, uh, and what does that mean? When, why the it, left hand? Well, first of all, the right hand's uh, running the throttle. Yeah, the right hand has the so, throttle, and, and the left that, hand faces the, the other bike. And, and why the, the two why, why the two fingers the, down? Why the two fingers two down? Two fingers down is keep two down. You keep, know, the, keep two wheels on the road. Keep the rubber side down, right? Yep. We're talking with Pat Gervais. Uh, he's the voice of a lot of the voice work for our radio show and our TV show, and he's responsible for helping me. He put several hundred hours of volunteer t- uh, time into helping us develop the new Bear School of Manliness. And we're going to be talking a little bit about that when we get back. This is Bear Wozniak. We want to invite you to go to deepadventure.com and find out more all about our, uh, our uh, new website. Uh, we also have our bookstore there, our uh, cool, a lot of cool stuff in our, in our, in our web store there. And uh, something there for the men and for the women. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. This is Dan Laboon Markham with another episode of Country Up at the Bishop Markham Ranch in Goldendale, Washington. Don't. Americans inherently bristle at don'ts. An independent spirit is ingrained into our national psyche, our culture, and politics. We don't cotton to others, especially the government, telling us what to do or not to do. Heard a man once say, I'm so busy doing the do's, I ain't got time to do the don'ts. Now that puts the emphasis on the right syllable. True of stellar fellow citizens who are so busy doing wholesome stuff for country, community, and kin, they ain't got time nor inclination to do otherwise. Reminds me of my old friend Christopher Shank. Our friendship harkens back to, oh, the 1960s in the waterfront of the Columbia River, later in life as Harley Biker Brothers. Chris always, you know, he put his faith in action can design, build, and fix just about anything. He's always been Johnny on the spot for anyone needing something to be repaired, whether car, electronic, equipment, dishwasher, or someone's front steps. The Apostle Paul wrote to the Galatians, challenging them to focus on doing the do's. Said, he who rides with the Spirit ends up propagating love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, kindness, goodness, and self-control. Again, such there is no law. Can't do no wrong when you're hitched tight to the Holy Spirit. Well, as Americans, we may rightly resist some of the edicts that come down from our state government or from the federal government, but as citizens of the kingdom, we're to walk in obedience to the king. We do it out of faith and love, empowered by the Spirit. Jesus summed it up this way, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. This is Daniel the Boone Markham at CountryUp.org on a journey a few miles this side of heaven. Mahalo for your kokua in supporting us. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to you, our listeners, for supporting the Bear Wozniak Adventure radio show at DeepAdventure.com. We would not be able to bring you our radio show with its uniquely powerful and gritty outreach without your help. You can become part of our pack. You can support our ministry by going to patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak or by just going to deepadventure.com and clicking on the Patreon link and become a part of our outreach. That's deepadventure.com. Once again, mahalo for your kokua. This is a warning. The Bear Wozniak Adventure is dangerous. The radical change Bear challenges you to is not for wimps. Change this station now to a soft rock station before it's too late. You've been warned. Now, here is Bear Wozniak. Aloha. Welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We want to invite our mama bears to go to deepadventure.com and become part of the Mama Bears a Mug Club. We're a non, that's a, a non-Facebook community for the women who are so, I don't know, fiercely loyal to uh, our ministry and to their own ohana. They see us as, as something c- that can have a good impact on their families. They pray for us. They financially support us. And so we put a Facebook community. I want to keep saying Facebook. Pat Gervais and I put, did a lot of work in putting together a non-Facebook 
community for the the women. As a matter of fact, the reason why one of the motivational motivational reasons why we did that is our original uh, Mama Bears uh, Mug Club on Facebook was shut down by Facebook. So that's why we have our own Facebook community now. And, and my guest Pat Gervais, uh, who's a good friend of mine, is also uh, was one of the, he and I worked together to put that up for the women. So go to deepadventure.com, women, and join uh, the Mama Bears uh, Mug Club. Pat Gervais, uh, you, were d- you were discussing about how we got to know each other. You threw a, through the radio show, and then we rode together. But I remember in particular uh, a moment in Cleveland, Ohio. Do you remember what we were doing there and what was going on? Yeah, you were doing some shooting for uh, The Long Ride Home. I was meeting with the uh, the international meeting, the annual international meeting of the Catholic Crossbearers Motorcycle Ministry. Uh, as I'm a member of the Knights on Bikes, and we are a brotherhood club with uh, the Crossbearers. But, uh, you know, the Crossbearers are special to me because they invite me to their national meetings every year. Uh, they open it up to, you know, poor me to come, which is if you know anything about the motorcycle community for one club to invite it, some, a member from another club to come in and attend their uh, meetings, it's it's a big deal. So I was up there and you know, just spending time with them. It's great to get together with other Catholics and share a passion, which we all have for motorcycling, along with our passion for Christ. But I was up there, you know, visiting with them and they, every uh, evening, they had one of their members used to lead a rosary down in the lobby of the hotel that we stayed in. Well, you know, since I was doing the rosary online, you know, I took and asked, hey, do you mind if I do it? And they said, no, sure, no problem. So I started, you know, for a couple of years, every evening I would lead the rosary. And I was leading the rosary when you showed up. Yeah, you know, it's so cool. Um, you're talking about becoming a part of the Catholic being able to participate with the Catholic Crossbearers Motorcycle Ministry, even though you're a member of the Knights on Bikes, which is national president, um, is is a member of our man cave and uh, uh, Ace Bagley. And there's about four or five thousand members of the of the Knights on Bikes now. The Knights of Columbus, un, under the Knights of Columbus banner. But here in Hawaii, when you go to the to the dealership here in Hawaii to buy a motorcycle, you'll see up on the walls all around the walls, the, the banners of each of the local motorcycle clubs, which is really unusual, um, very unusual. I've never seen it before. But it's just basically uh, this, this love for each other among the different biker uh, clubs and uh, watching out for each other and sharing ohana. We know that there's uh, a, a great love within their, the brotherhood, within their club, but also that we, sharing it with others. But I just remember, Pat, that, that particular day, was probably one of the most hellacious days I've ever had. Uh, I've had hard days, I guess, but it was up there in the top 10. Uh, we had been riding in Washington, D.C., and that's when everything started. To, you could just feel the demonic attack. And then the next day, uh, we'd, have, we'd have moments of relief, like an oasis, like almost running from one bunker to another. We rode into Steubenville. You know, Franciscan University of Steubenville had a beautiful time there and walked out into, into even more just hard, 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 just a demonic attack and um and people say are, are you under you ever experienced that you're under spiritual attack when you're out on the road filming and i go no we're on the attack and sometimes we just face some resistance because the gates of hell will not prevail against the church but gates don't attack people right we attack the gates exactly. but that day i remember walking in after a long ride motorcycle problems every kind of thing that could go wrong it was just it was just a horrible hard difficult difficult day and I remember being exhausted and carrying my uh, motorcycle bag uh, on my shoulder walking into the lobby of frankly not the nicest hotel in Cleveland I'm sure and we walked in and I was just beat up and there was a bunch of people uh, sitting in the lobby to my right and I thought I don't have the energy to speak to anybody and uh, I looked over and there was Pat praying the rosary and I was thinking thank God the Catholic motorcycle ministry is praying the rosary with Pat and everything's going to be okay. But I remember going upstairs, and then, nothing, then it wasn't okay because that night the fire alarm, which is the loudest fire alarm I've ever heard in my life, kept going off about every 20 minutes, and it would last for about 30 minutes, and then it would go off for 20 minutes and go on again. None of us had sleep. My, uh, my uh, film crew mutinied. 
<laughs> they just couldn't, you know, they just couldn't, just couldn't rally. And frankly, I was pretty beat up too. We were all beat up. Um, it was asking a lot of my crew to go out and film. We were supposed to ride with you guys and film that whole day. But you know what? The bikers got up. They rode. They, they rode. They had a seven or eight hour ride that day. They did a nice full circle. And, uh, and I was just, that, that's, that's what you talked about, the virtue of fortitude, that you just keep on going, right? Yeah, that is. And it's like, uh, you know, if you get caught in the rain, you know, you've really got three choices. You can either stop, tuck your tail between your legs and go home. You can hide somewhere and hope it passes by. Or what most of us do is just you know, drop a gear and hit the throttle. Just keep riding. Yeah, it's but only it also, wet. But also, it's, it's a great example of prudence uh, and fortitude, how they go together. You know, because God, in, in your spiritual life, if you're a Christian, you're you're going to be called to do bold things. You know, you're not supposed to be. Prudence isn't sitting on the couch and getting all comfortable. Prudence is only needed when you're going to do something bold. And yep. so, there's a certain way that the pack rides together. You're, you've you, you've checked out your bike to make sure it's safe. And there are times when you have to when you have to. Uh, I remember the first time I rode with my wife Cindy, we had to pull over, and I wouldn't call it a rainfall. It was like a waterfall. Found ourselves at a, in a chocolate factory, <laughs> so that wasn't all bad. But yeah, the combination of prudence and fortitude. But you know, then then we did that ride up to uh, we we where, where did where did we all well, we went up to uh, Michigan? We met up with the Knights on Bikes. Tell them where we rode that first day. I know you had a bike. There was a collision, but tell them tell them about that. But tell them where we were going. Yeah, I didn't make it all the way, but uh, the rest of the uh, Knights on Bikes and others. We're on their way to hell. Yeah, we're on our way to hell. It, it, there is a place that is uh, called Hell, Michigan, and they they have lots of fun with uh, with the name of the community. Uh, I used to live in northern uh, northern Indiana, which is only like three or four hours away from hell, and we get reports that uh, oh yeah, storm was real bad last night. Hell froze over. <laughs> well, what I like about it, we rode to hell and back. And yep. I think a lot of people in life, they, they feel like they've been to hell. They've been through the worst of times. Maybe right now you are. Um, but it's when you come to the end of yourself, when you've really gone through hell, uh, when you really learn to just let go and say, God, I can't do this. You've got to help me. It's, it's, it's like that moment of total, um, total exhaustion, weariness, confusion. Uh, it's at that moment when you just drop your guard and say, okay, God, you win. I know when Jacob was wrestling with God out in the desert, you know, the angel of the Lord, the pre-incarnate Christ, he fought and fought and fought with, with, with God through the night. And then finally he just closed distance and grabbed onto him. And he said, I won't, I won't let go until you bless me. And that's the nature. Like when you're, when you're watching a prize fight, the, the boxer that's losing will go close distance and grab on to the other, his opponent, because then the punches don't hurt so bad. And it's kind of like men in your life right now, if you're in that place where you feel you're like at the bitter end, you're at the bottom, um, close distance with God, drop your defenses, drop your agendas. You don't, you know, you can't hang on to someone else and hang on to your, your backpack that's weighted down with guilt and selfishness and pride. You just got to let go of everything and just cling and hold on to Jesus. And what, what the angel of the Lord did with Jacob at that moment is he punched him in the hip. So basically from that moment on, Jacob was given a new name, Israel. When you drop everything and cling to God, he'll give you a new name, he'll give you a new life, uh, and he, but he might punch you in the hip. In other words, you might walk with a limp a little bit. In other words, you might, before you take your next step, you might hesitate and ask God, is this your will, Lord? Is this your will, Lord? So we're talking with Pat Gervais, who's a good friend, and we will be talking more about how we, how we got to know each other, and we'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Aloha, this is Bear Wozniak coming to you from my home in Waikiki Beach. And today I want to talk to you about the virtue of moderation. I remember once surfing with my buddies at County Line in Ventura, California. Wally was there and Cap was there and we got it out of that freezing cold water, went up to Neptune's Net, sat down having some, some hot coffee to keep us warm. And one of the people said, you know what? The only thing you really need in life is new socks. And you know what? In the islands we don't wear socks, but on the mainland, a nice pair of new, like, white 
socks can be a real luxury. And from then on, that was really about the only luxury I had in my life. I'd always buy about a dozen new pair of socks about every couple months and just enjoy those socks. The next day we said, yep, that's all you really need in life. And we sat down, we said, it's a new pair of socks. And then someone said, you know what? You really need a bucket too, because you got to have something to butt your socks in. And then someone said, you know what? What you really, really need in life is you, you need a surfboard. Oh yeah, that goes without saying, you got to have a surfboard. And then someone said, you know what? You need a wax for your surfboard. And then someone said, you need a real cool car with surf racks to put your surfboard on. And then someone said, you know, when it's flat, it's a good time to go sailing. What you really need is a sailboat. And so we had gone from this thing of being a minimalist and, and, uh, and a detachment to wanting more and more and more. We call it being acquisitive. The first lesson we need to learn in life is one of the first things we need to learn is detachment. Detachment from things, detachment from a need for power, detachment from a need for money, detachment from a need for glory. Learn to detach from all these things that we think might console us and learn to find our only consolation in intimacy with God. This is Bear Wozniak coming to you from Waikiki Beach. Abandon yourself to the wild adventure of God's will. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak Adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to notredamefcu.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak Adventure possible. Men, are you looking for something that you can lead your sons through that will help them grow in manly virtue? Our new school of manliness provides you and your sons with 36 months of audio, video, and written lessons that includes a full toolbox with all of our Long Ride Home TV series, all the video versions of the Bear Wozniak Adventure radio show, Bear's Daily Catechism in a Year video podcast, Pat Gervais, the Catholic Biker Daily Rosary, and a lot more. You can lead your sons of confirmation age and above through this manly school. Go to deepadventure.com and look into Bear's new school of manliness. This is a warning. The Bear Wozniak Adventure is dangerous. The radical change Bear challenges you to is not for wimps. Change this station now to a soft rock station before it's too late. You've been warned. Now, here is Bear Wozniak. Aloha. Welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Our, my co-adventure guy today is Pat Gervais. He's actually out here with me in Waikiki Beach. And uh, after we get done doing this, this, this uh, talk story together, we're going to go get on a sailing catamaran and take a sail out, out in front of Waikiki with a friend of mine, Jay, who lives here in the same building as I do. And, uh, and check out how beautiful the island is when you look at the island from the ocean. So, Pat, we met, we met up and we, we did that ride in Michigan. And uh, we were filming part of Long Ride Home there. But then there came a time, Pat, when, <clears throat> when frankly, I haven't talked about it. I don't know. Maybe I've talked about it briefly once or maybe mentioned it. But I, I had to go through a real difficult time with prostate cancer. I had to uh, either have my cancer removed or go through radiation. And I remember you'd say, whatever I can do to help, let me know. And, you know, people say that all the time. So you just kind of take it for granted that, yeah, ca call, me, call me sometime, which means never. But you were very insistent, and I remember going to those radiation treatments afterwards. Uh, I could hardly make it back home <laughs> without having to make an emergency stop someplace, and and it just really beat me up. I didn't realize how badly it had beat me up until now that I'm stronger and healthier, and I look back at what those treatments were. But you were the one that would pick me up many times, take me there, bring me back, uh, 
I don't know how many times you, you, you helped me and always sparing my dignity because when you're going through that, you don't feel very dignified. And you uh, showed yourself to be a true friend that was there in time of need. Oh, thank you. you know, it's just it, it's just my mindset. So the, the way I was raised, uh, you know, possibly coming from the biker community also, it's uh, yeah, you don't offer something you aren't willing to give. And if you do offer it and someone takes you up on it, you you do it. I mean, you, that's j just the way I am. It's, you know, if I take and say, so, you know, tell, it's easy for me to say, if I tell someone, you know, Hey, I'll be there at such and such a time, you know, or, you know, if you need anything, let me know. I, I don't do that casually. I, you know, when I say that it's, it's coming from the heart and it's meant and it's followed through on. Yeah. Amen. And that, and that, that type of a friend is who Jesus is. You know, the Holy Spirit is our friend. Jesus is our friend. We're invited. Jesus said, I won't call you servants anymore because a servant doesn't know what the master is about, what the master is doing. I will call you friends. And so we as Christians, men, you don't have to be so tough all the time, but we sure don't need enough not, any more nice guys. We need some good men who are able to be open and say, hey, look, I, I, I have a problem. I need help or I've, I, I, you know, pray for my family, pray for me in this situation. That's why we have the Man Cave Brotherhood. You can join it at deepadventure.com. But uh, you can become friends with God. What a phenomenal, phenomenal statement to make. We know he, we're his kids. You know, when we give our lives to Lord, we know we're his kids. But some kids never really become friends with their parents. You know, like, I mean, you're always going to be a mother or a father. But there's a point, like, you, you can see me when, when each of my sons, we have a special relationship, even in, even in a unique, different way. But um, to be able to say to the Lord, I want to be your friend. To be able to say to the Holy Spirit, I want to be your friend. And then to just walk and talk with him through the day. You know, like, um, Lord, what shirt should I wear today? You know, what, what, where should I stop for gasoline for my car? You know, um, just to have a day-to-day, -day, a normal, casual relationship and get comfortable that Jesus walks alongside you. He doesn't come along. The Holy Spirit doesn't come along to condemn you. He comes along to convict you of your sin, but then to say, hey, let me help you with that. You're having a trouble getting over this sin or having a trouble with that. You've gotten yourself in, into some debt because of some foolishness. Uh, I'm not going to just get rid of that for you, but I'm going to show you how to walk through it and you can grow in virtue and I'll come alongside and help you. You know what I mean? How do you, how do you see yourself, uh, the friendship of Jesus in your life? Uh, not as close as I am with you, unfortunately. I you know, feel like I really do need to, that, and I think everyone feels this way that regardless how close you are, you, there's always a long, a lot further that you can go mm. to improve your relationship. Uh, one of the things that I uh, did, especially out here, as I said, you know, it's everything's walking distance and the weather is just perfect. So I've done a lot of walking and I could really sense the Holy Spirit literally walking along with me. Mm -hmm. I sensed Mary walking with me. Amen. That's exactly and, right. And, and yeah, you know, but I mean, physically, well, not that I could sense someone there, but you know, spiritually, I knew that she was walking along with me. She was seeing the beautiful sight. She was smiling at everything, mm. and she was helping me to see some of the beauty Amen. of everything. Yeah, you know, when we were, and, and it, it can be small things or big things, but if you can't ask the Lord, people say, well, I can't ask the Lord to do a small thing for me because he's too busy. Yeah, right. God's all powerful, almighty, omniscient. Um, you know, you can ask him for the small things. But if you don't learn how to ask him for the small things, you're not going to ask him for the big things. And I remember, Pat, uh, we've been waiting for the whales to come back here to Hawaii. They come back every winter around the 1st of December. And it was about the 14th or 15th of December, and we hadn't seen the whales here yet in Waikiki from our condo. And so we just said, Lord, please, uh, please bring our whales back to Waikiki uh, because they calve around the bend over here at Makapu'u area. And then the, they'll bring the little calf in uh, with a few of the bigger whales will come in. And, and uh, lately, this is something they've started, the behavior they've started in the last seven years where they'll just come around into Waikiki and not go much further than where we can see from our house. And we said, Lord, please bring the whales. Can bring the whales here tomorrow. And the next day, what happened? The whales the whale showed up. Two whales and a baby whale. And so that, that was a little thing, or maybe it was a big thing. But another kind of humorous thing is we were golfing the other day, and I said, let's ask the Lord that we can both get a birdie or a par. 
And your statement was, you of little faith said, oh, that jinxes it. And I said, no, let's pray. And, I, and we prayed. And I think you got the second par of your life. Yep. And I got a birdie because God like, lo- loves me better. But oh, I can't, believe, can't believe I said that. But no, I mean, if, if you can't ask the Lord, what shirt should I wear today? Or Lord, will you help me get a parking spot? Because the Bible does say he goes before you to make a way. Then you really don't understand the, uh, the friendship of Jesus and the friendship of the Holy Spirit and how the little things, when you ask him, it gives him pleasure. You know, so t- t- so I asked you a favor. I asked you to come alongside me, and I said, "Will you help me build this new website, the Bear School of Manliness website? It's deepadventure.com gets you there. Can you describe a little bit about the adventure of building that site and why we built it?" Oh, that was uh, that was such a you know a rush doing it. Uh, yeah, a little background. That was my kuleana, I think the is the term that uh, you use. That was my responsibility when I. Uh, was in corporate America as I worked in IT. So all of this stuff I hadn't used for a few years, you know, started doing it, it came rushing back and it was just, it, it was so great to be able to do it. But the other thing was that uh, in doing it, we, you know, we encountered problems, but as a team, we were able to work together, all three of us, you, me, the Holy Spirit, and uh, we're able to figure out what the problem was, resolve it, and keep moving on. But we'd get together probably for anywhere from half an hour to three or four hours on a conference call, me in Florida, you in Hawaii, and just basically talking it through, pointing, clicking, building it almost on the fly. I mean, we did have a design in mind, but a lot of it grew organically it's one of those hey what happens when you click on this hey this is cool let's do that and yeah so the holy spirit was there with us and you know yeah. i have i have this great love for for cowboys my wife is a rodeo girl she was a barrel racer and i had a cabin up in montana and i just remember as a kid of course every kid you know still loves cowboys i think and uh but i like the cowboy virtue you know, I, my first editor, Lou Aronica, was Louis L'Amour's last editor, who is the great Western writer. In fact, I have all of Louis L'Amour's Westerns. In fact, the name of the show, Long Ride Home with Bear Wozniak, I didn't realize was named after a, a Louis L'Amour book until I was moving some books around, and, the, and this book fell out of that, that box that I was moving to my bookshelf, and it said, Long Ride Home by Louis L'Amour. So I love Louis L'Amour. And wh- one of the reasons I like him, I was talking with Father Bryce Lundgren, the cowboy priest in Wyoming, and... Uh, he was talking about how his brother loves Louis Lamore Westerns, too, because of the cowboy virtue. You know, they ride for the brand. They don't pick a fight, but they won't back down from a fight. They're clever, but not conniving. They live by a creed. Uh, they have fortitude. Uh, they're often very wise in these books. They're, they're wise uh, with their money. They may not have any, but they're careful with it, or they might invest in it a little bit secretly, or maybe they're saving for a ranch. Each of the cowboys would carry a, a Bible or I think it's Blackthorn's book on the law or a Plato or Aristotle. So they were learned. But the one thing they all ha- had in common is they stood between a danger and the vulnerable. And I like what Father Bryce told me, and it's also true, that all of, all of the cowboys, before they would meet a woman, there's always a woman involved in their books. Um, it, it may not be a love interest, it may be, but, but there's always a woman that the man is involved with and protecting. Not that she isn't a strong woman, but sometimes you're in a position you need a, a man, uh, a man to come alongside, and they're celibate. You know, even uh, his brother's favorite character or his favorite character, I think, is is Matt Dillon on Gunsmoke because he was celibate. He he protected Miss Kitty, but his celibacy allowed him to him to run free if he needed to go chase someone down for a month or so. He could do that because he didn't have those other responsibilities. And to him, it reminded him of his priesthood. And so our whole website is based on the cowboy theme, the Bear School of Manliness website that Patrick Vey and I uh, put together together. And you can find it at deepadventure.com. We'll be right back with more of the Bear. Wozniak Adventure. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak Adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to notredamefcu.com. 
Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. Mahalo for your Kokua in supporting us. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to you, our listeners, for supporting the Bear Wozniak Adventure radio show at deepadventure.com. We would not be able to bring you our radio show with its uniquely powerful and gritty outreach without your help. You can become part of our pack. You can support our ministry by going to patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak or by just going to deepadventure.com and clicking on the Patreon link and become a part of our outreach. That's deepadventure.com. Once again, mahalo for your kokua. This is a warning. The Bear Wozniak Adventure is dangerous. The radical change Bear challenges you to is not for wimps. Change this station now to a soft rock station before it's too late. You've been warned. Now, here is Bear Wozniak. Aloha. Welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We're talking with Pat Gervais, my good friend. Uh, he's really laid down his life in, in servant leadership in our in our ministry. He is the one who has Kuleana for Bear's Man Cave, where Bear's Man Cave is a place where the men can come and join a non-Facebook community. We had to do that because we didn't want to uh, deal with the limitations of being kicked off Facebook. We have a beautiful non-Facebook Man Cave community. And he welcomes you when you join. He, he does a little uh, short story talk story with you on Zoom. He introduces you to the other men and helps you get dialed into the man cave and then, and then participate in Bear School of Manliness. Pat, can you tell them uh, what the man cave is and then, more, and then lead into what, what we have going on in the three-year cycle curriculum, Bear School of Manliness? Well, like you said, the, uh, the man cave is a non-Facebook community. Um, primary reason is in this whole cancel culture that we're living in right now, uh, a lot of things have been either blocked or you know, tagged as fake news. And just recently they've, uh, in court hearings, you know, you know, Zuckerberg has admitted, oh yeah, the uh, fact checkers are just offering their opinion on it. But it's, uh, this is an area where, uh, yeah, to use the cowboy analogy, the cow, the, the cattle can run wild. They can, uh, you know, we got a free range pasture out there that everyone can uh, go through and express comfortably without censorship their, uh, you know, Christian feelings and concerns and the like. Uh, it's also, uh, you know, the school of manliness is phenomenal. It's a, it's broken out as you mentioned in three years. The first year is focused on is 12 monthly sessions on the individual virtues, including faith, hope, charity, fortitude, justice. And I always forget the last two. <laughs> justice, fortitude, prudence, uh, self-mastery, faith, hope, and love. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, so we have that, yeah, we have those, you know, we, we have the, we have them virtues. all set up. We have them all set up so that people can. Uh, uh, well, the way it works is is this man cave. I think Pat uh, maybe misstated or understated the power of it because the men come. You have to be a member uh, to to jo you have to join, and uh, it's not open to everybody. But most men who want to join, we allow them to join. But um, it's it's a place where we're like all bozos on the same bus. You know, we're all just we're, we're trying to go deeper with the Lord we're trying to learn how to live a life of servant leadership for our families and our communities but when you've really hit a rough spot there's other men there that have been through the same thing and we uh, you're, you're, you're you've suddenly realized that you don't have to hide yourself or be ashamed of of things in your life you can go into a community of men that have all been there to some degree or another and we help each other people will write and say hey I've really had a problem with pornography how do I how did you how did you um, conquer that or I've had a problem uh, of, of um, I have a, a child that I, I that I that is acting out what do I do or my hey uh, my wife is sick can you pray for her and so part of that ministry is Pat has the daily Catholic biker rosary the week on week weeknights the 
Catholic like a rosary, that's part of our ministry, that you can join and pray in. But there's also the man cave where you can actually get to know other men. And we every two weeks, what do we do? Yeah, we get together for a Zoom meeting, and you know it's face to face. We're talking about you know the virtue of the month and helping each other one understand the virtue and how it you know plays out in our day to day life. But also, uh, we've had Zoom meetings where someone has come in and said, you know, hey guys, before we get started, you know, I'm having problems with X, Y, Z. And I, one in particular comes to mind, we spent almost the whole Zoom meeting just focused on his issue and helping him you know, deal with it, offering suggestions, uh, connecting each other, you know, connecting some of the men with someone else that has a similar uh, issue or has dealt with that. And they've actually gone offline and worked together on uh, doing things. So it's really a great place where it's full confidence. You know, everything and anything that's said in there is said in full confidence. And it's not, you know, I don't like to use the term, you know, steal it from Vegas, but what happens in the man cave stays in the man cave where, uh, you know, we don't, you know, bring things out. It can't be seen by anyone other than it's not recorded or anything. Of- yeah, and it's not recorded. Right. But, and you know, so the man cave is a place for us to open up, and 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 we we do have our hold my hold my beer moments too, that people oh, yeah. share. It should be fun. It's and just because you know people used. To, I know I was part of a men's uh, group once, and if and if you were having a happy time and you came to the men group, men's group, they made sure that you had a problem you had to work on before you left. That's not what this is about, and it's not about accountability. It's a kind of a word I frankly don't like too much. It's about brothers loving each other and encouraging each other and challenging each other. And you should leave that meeting feeling empowered and ready for, for anything. And, and then and harassing each other too. Yeah, yeah, you're really good at harassing me. But then but then there's this positive thing you can do. The the Bear School of Manliness, we have it set up for monthly curriculum, and there's about thirteen lessons in each month, maybe a dozen, sometimes there's seven or eight. But each lesson, as you do them, you click it, you click it, you click it. So you make a progression through. Right now, we have about 60 lessons for, for uh, uh, I mean, yeah, something like 60 lessons uh, uh, set up in, in, that school, in that school of manliness. And you can watch your progress as you go. And the cool thing is you can sign up for your whole family. There's a special family rate where each, each uh, child probably of 13 years or older can uh, can uh, uh, value get value from this, and you can lead your family through the school of manliness, uh, your sons through the school of manliness, and they can they uh, they click off the lessons as they go, so you know if they're following that curriculum. Once a week, you can you can follow what we do, and you can you can do this with your family. We don't let the younger people join the man cave. You have to be at least 18 years old to, to join the man cave, but um, but it's a great place for men to take and lead their families. And uh, draw them in a in a real deep and positive conversation about the virtues. You know, um, remember Elijah fought fought the priests and prophets in Baal, and then he had a big depression after he won this great victory. And he said, "Oh God, it's only me. I'm the only one left who loves you." And God says, "No, Obadiah's got a hundred men hidden in a cave," and that that was called the, the the school of the prophets. So the school of manliness, a place where men form each other and where God forms the men. And it's a it's a great place. I mean, I I don't know how many friends I've made going through the man cave over the uh, I don't even remember how many years that it's uh, it's been. Yeah, before, long before yeah, long before Zo- long before Zoom became popular, we were doing Zoom, right? Yeah, yeah, we were zooming before people even knew how to spell Zoom. <laughs> but we encourage people to go to what where where do they go to join and how do they join? Go to deepadventure.com. There's a uh, a couple of links there. The, the top of the page, it's you know, has a uh, brief description of the school of manliness in the man cave, and a button you click that says "Tell me more." It'll lay out all the differences. Also, for you, uh, mama bears, for you ladies, if you're, uh, you know, if you scroll down on that same page, I believe you know, underneath where it talks about the man cave, there's the uh, the mama bears section. And you can click on that, and that you know tells you even more about you know what's what there is for you know the women you know yeah the you know, mama women, bears mug club what's what's that yeah. all about yeah the mama bears mug club is much much the same as the uh, man cave, 
And as you alluded to earlier, the uh, lady that was doing it when we were up on Facebook actually got shut down several times. So it's good we're no Facebook. longer. Yeah, we have the our content. own content. So we're, you know, Facebook, oh, yeah. See you later, Mark Zuckerberg. Yeah, you are, you know, but you don't get know, our business. Yeah. But, you know, the thing about the man cave, too, is I remember God gave me a, 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 an image in my mind when I first started in the ministry of a guy in a black pickup truck. And he was spinning his wheel, c- wheels because he had no weightiness of purpose in the bed of that truck. Uh, he didn't have one of those big toolboxes. So in the man cave, we also provide a big toolbox. In fact, it's all cowboy images. And this is a cowboy reaching from his saddle on his horse into the toolbox to get a tool out. And in there we have um, we have things like the the. the the liturgy of the hour, the catechism, the readings from mass. We have a ability for you to take a, a survey of where you are in terms of that month's lesson, as far as uh, how do you measure up and where can you improve. We have we have you we give you the ability to set what we call smart goals and how to how to develop and grow in each area. So, and we also have a playlist that you can play in the car because the Kajabi because the app is on your iPhone and your iPad. It's like a regular you get it from the App Store too. And uh, you, you, you play the playlist of country western music. So how good is that? You guys, we got to go. We're talking with uh, Pat Gervais. He's the voice of, uh, of our TV show, our radio show. He's the Catholic biker. And you can, in our toolbox, we have his nightly rosaries there so you can watch it live. Uh, and so uh, Pat uh, has Kuliana for the entire Man Cave, too, to welcome guests and new members and make them feel welcome. Pat, thanks for joining us. Anytime, Bear. Anytime. It's been a pleasure coming in to visit with you. And I hope everyone goes up to deepadventure.com and uh, checks out the Man Cave and the School of Manliness. Okay, and we got to roll the because... The Mama Bear's Mug Club. Yeah, and we got to roll because we're supposed to get on a catamaran and go sail today with our friend Jay. Until next week, may the breath of the Holy Spirit aloha you. Aloha! Hey, man, I don't want you to miss out on your free stuff at deepadventure.com. Go there and subscribe to our weekly email newsletter. You get free video content, including the Bear Wozniak radio show, video version on YouTube before it even airs on EWTN. And you can follow us on all of our social media. Go to deepadventure.com and subscribe. Get your free stuff. And if you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to press the subscribe button and ring that little bell. Don't miss out.